wintery mix or whatever it is right now. Thank you for coming, I really appreciate it. Um, as you all know, uh, every day is a great day to be a Hoosier, um, but today is a particularly great day for this Hoosier. Uh, as I announced earlier today, at the end of this year, uh, this academic year, the bicentennial year, I'll be retiring as the AD at, 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 at Indiana. Uh, I won't be retiring totally, I'm just retiring from Indiana uh, and as an athletic director. Like I said in the uh, comments in the release, it's just time. And that being time doesn't mean that, I'm not, that I don't love it anymore, because I do, still love it. And it doesn't mean that there's nothing left to be accomplished, because there's plenty left to be accomplished. It just means that it's time. You know, it's been, it'll have been almost 12 years um, for me, and it's an all-in, all-consuming, every day, uh, all the time job, which is part of the reason I really love it. Um, but now I'm ready to step back and uh, do something a little more flexible, spend a little more time with my uh, four granddaughters and another grandchild on the way in, uh, in, in uh, January. So uh, that's, that's what I'll be doing at the end. I don't know exactly what I'll be doing, but I know something will come up uh, and it'll be uh, great fun. So uh, I came here to try to reestablish a strong foundation for Indiana University Athletics. I really feel like uh, we have done that, and, uh, and it's time for me to exit uh, stage left, so I will join that. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any uh, questions you may have. I guess, when did you kind of first know that this was the decision you wanted to make, and, and if you can, as much as you're willing, take us through kind of the steps from that point to right now? Sure, so um, I've been thinking about it for a while, Zach. Um, the bicentennial year um, seemed like a, a natural bookend. We've been pointing a lot of our uh, efforts uh, and, and using in some ways the bicentennial as a hook to get things done. We'll uh, complete a record-shattering um, bicentennial capital campaign soon. Um, we will um, uh, complete our bicentennial capital campaign, which uh, has invested just in the last decade or over a quarter of a billion dollars in our facilities. So things came together, and I think it was a natural time to reflect on that. And, and uh, I've been thinking about it for quite a while, and talking to my wife Barbara, and, and I think sort of an Ignatian thing to settle yourself with the decision and see how it feels. And this felt really right. And, and I have uh, no regrets and feel really positive about the decision, but giving that some time to, uh, to uh, uh, stew with me was good. Um, in terms of timing, my hand got a little forced by the Tom Allen contract uh, extension because I felt uh, it was only right to let Tom know that, um, that, that, that what my intentions were. I hadn't told anybody until that point. In fact, he actually asked me during those conversations about you know, what my plans were and interest in, in me being around. Um, I couldn't quite tell him about my plans until I told the president, so I actually scrambled a late uh, evening meeting with, uh, with President Robbie on the Wednesday before the Allen announcement. I think that'd be like the 4th of December, so I told Michael that night, and then I told uh, um, Tom the next day. I also had a regularly scheduled weekly meeting with Archie, and I told him that day too, so I think Thursday before the um, uh, announcement of, uh, for Tom. The President told the trustees, as, as a matter of habit, since they were meeting in Columbus, um, and then we sort of went radio silent until uh, the rollout today. Fred, when you took this job, back when you didn't really have any athletic director experience coming into it, uh, so looking back over it all, can you maybe talk about the one or two or three things about this job that surprised you the most? Um, I think everything surprised me. You know, I mean, I, I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't understand the uh, acronyms. I didn't understand the, uh, what the joint group was, what, what, what the cycle was. And, and you know, I think I paid a price for, you know, that learning curve. But at the same time, I think that was more than offset by I was too dumb to know what I couldn't do. And I think we went after some things and did some things that conventional wisdom might have said we couldn't do. But because I wasn't a product of that environment, I think able to get something uh, done. But I will say, especially in those early days, I felt like 
you know, I was driving full speed down the interstate with no headlights on because I, I really didn't know. We were going fast, not really quite sure where, where things were going. Um, but, but over time, I think we were able to get some things accomplished in part because we were taking a fresh look at some things. I guess, if you have any kind of favorite memories from the tenure that you've had here, is there anything that stands out that you're going to look back on more than anything else? I'm sorry, like a favorite moment? Yeah, just kind of like a favorite memory, so then you're going to, you know, look back on on your tenure as like the number one thing that you accomplished. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, I'm, thank I'm thankful and fortunate that, that I really have a chock full uh, memory cabinet of, of, of fun things and cool things. Most of them involve um, interacting directly with the students, which is day in day out my favorite part. Um, I'll say the, the eighth national championship in men's soccer was a highlight, especially when Todd was my first hire. Uh, as a coach and to have that success was, was gratifying. Um, you know, the watch shot was just an instantaneous um, phenomenon that galvanized the whole campus and uh, was a very exciting moment. And even though it didn't reflect us being all the way back to where we wanted to go, it really reflected Indiana University basketball being relevant again nationally uh, after uh, essentially being wiped out and, and uh, sort of de facto beat out the death penalty um, to come back that way. That was a great tribute to Tom Crane, um, by the way, but very few times is there a moment in time where, where, where you, were, you were back. Maybe not ultimately where you want to be, but back relevant, and that was, that was big. And then more recently, um, the win in Nebraska was very gratifying uh, to go into that environment. Beat them for the first time in 60 years. Um, uh, was, you know, staying on that sideline was, was a really great thing. And every time we beat Purdue, which has been five times in the last seven years, by the way. Um, uh, that's, that's been well. Mr. Price, everything you've done has been geared towards the, this future of IU Athletics. Uh, how will you be involved in selecting your successor, and is there a timeline for that? Yeah, I won't really be involved in, in the selection of the successor. I, I have provided my confidential counsel to the president. I'll continue to do that as asked. Um, but that will be his decision. And, you know, when, when you move on, you move on. On um, from a lot of cool things, and I think you just, you just don't look back. So I'll be around uh, as people may ask, but I won't be on the foot. Um, and in terms of the, the selection process, that'll be 100% run by the president. I think he'll have an announcement this week with more details about how he's going to approach that. At uh, um, what the, at this point in your tenure, basically, what do you feel like, what do you feel fulfilled, fulfilled about? What do you feel like you your most important accomplishments that you walk away from that you have, I guess, what do you feel, I guess, not fulfilled about? And what do you think will be the most important uh, challenges for your success? Yeah, in terms of um, uh, what I feel good about in terms of accomplishments, um, without getting into details of specific things, I think they're more global things. So um, I really felt like I came here at a time when the foundation of IU Athletics needed to be rebuilt. And I, I think we've done that um, literally with the buildings and uh, figuratively with rebuilding the culture. And as a lot of regulars know, it all circulates around five priorities. You know, number one, we're going to follow the rules. I think we've really instituted a culture of compliance. We have no major infractions cases uh, during my uh, tenure here. Number two, we want our kids to be well in mind, body, and spirit. I think we've been a nationally innovative leader in terms of uh, programming and personal development. Uh, uh, programs and care uh, for our kids. I'm, I'm proud of that. Um, number three, we want to achieve academically. We're graduating our kids at a record rate. We set record after record on uh, our graduation success rate. We want to be excellent athletically. Um, many, if not most, of our programs are enjoying historically great um, uh, seasons, and we're, we're proud of that. And, and all of our sports, I think, have a very positive, bright future. I'm extremely proud of the cadre of coaches. Uh, that we have. Herman Wells said, from the university's perspective, it's it's the faculty that makes you famous. And I've always considered our coaches our faculty. And the facilities are important, the programming is important, the culture is important. But what really uh, defines whether you're going to be successful or not is the quality of your head coaches. And I feel like we have a great um, group of uh, head coaches on our faculty, which I think is the future. Um, right. Number five, we want to be integrated with the university. I think we, we have been. Um, we pride ourselves on that point. And all the while, um, we've set records in fundraising. 
and not coincidentally um, gone on that quarter billion dollar uh, facility remake, which wasn't creating you know luxuries. It was really, um, I think, um, catching up from too many years of neglect uh, of our facility. So when you take those five priorities, I feel like we've been able to um, pay more than lip service to those and have documented success in those areas, which uh, I think lead the department uh, with a very strong foundation going forward. Uh, one of the things that you mentioned when you came was that you wanted to really help football become a big Kind of take us through what you feel like the key things there and where you feel football is right now. Yeah, it's funny you mention that, Jeff, because I was just talking to someone about my interview with the search committee and um, Part of my pitch to the search committee was Indiana's got to get football right, you know. And we, there's a lot of other things we need to do, um, but for a variety of reasons, um, we need to get uh, football to be excellent, like the overall Indiana University brand. Because number one, I think it's important for football's sake. Football reflects disproportionately on your school, whether you like it or not. Again, well said. That if we're going to participate in something, we should be excellent at it, and we have not been excellent at football. Um, I think football is also important for the department, right, because it, it can be a huge uh, revenue generator, not only to reinvest in football, but to reinvest in our other sports as well. And we have inventory, we have opportunity to generate more money. I've often said that um, if we just fill the small state that we have, uh, that we have, we can get seven, seven or eight million dollars to drop on the bottom line, which really makes a difference uh, on our budget. So it's important for the department. And finally, um, Beyond being important for football and being important for the department, it's important for the university um, because I believe that if, that if, as an undergrad, going to games is part of your uh, experience, you're more likely to be connected to the university. And maybe you make a gateway contribution to the foundation, or maybe you're on the dean's advisory council of whatever school you were in. So I think the stakes are, are very high, and that's why we really focused, uh, and I think not at the expense of neglecting other uh, important sports, all of our sports. Um, but we've really focused on, on the football investment, closing in the two end zones, and most recently the Terry Town Indiana football complex, and investing in an unprecedented uh, rate in coaches, assistant coaches, offensive coordinators, strength conditioning, uh, strength conditioning coaches, et cetera, I think is really important. Um, but you got you got to slog at it every day and have consistency. Um, so, as you know, Jeff. My thing was football will improve and we have consistently excellent leadership and, and consistent investments in the program. And you know, you keep chipping at that rock and eventually, you know, it cracks. I think we had a little bit of a crack this year, which was sort of like a you know, an, an overnight sensation ten years in the making. From, from when your time started here, you talked a lot about academics being so important. Why was that so much of an emphasis for you and how that very to see that the numbers and the graduation rates and stuff like that haven't come up? Yeah, I, well, you know, when I came here, um, I came here because we had a major infractions case where our most prominent coach um, um, didn't prioritize athletics, let's say, and, and, and broke the rules. And it's not a coincidence that my two number one, or my number one and number three priorities are following the rules and then only after the wellness of the kids, academics. And that sounds super pedestrian, but if, but if you have those basic rules in order. They are super helpful when you're in a situation, a budget question, a crisis, or whatever. You say, if, if academics is really you know, our third priority and it's ahead of uh, athletics, then we're going to do this and not that. Um, so we're an educational institution. I think it should be patent that, uh, that academics uh, should be preeminent. It is for us second only to um, playing by the rules, and I'm, I'm really gratified that we went from graduation success rate shortly after I was here, and I think it was about 74% to one that as we sit here today is 91%. And in, in those intervening years, we set seven, tied or set seven straight um, records. And, and I guess, Dustin, if we're going to look at particular uh, things to be proud of, I'm, I'm particularly proud of the improvement of our graduation success rate. Uh, you discussed uh, basketball being kind of in a dire situation when you took over. How do you evaluate just the basketball program during your ten years here, and kind of the future where it stands now, and, and where you see it kind of going? Yeah, as we sit here today, it's hard to even think about how bad it was um, when I got here. We were, we were you know, 
getting pictures off the baseball team to dress and play. Um, it, it was, it was um, really, really uh, bad. And I give Tom Crane tremendous credit for his will and perseverance to bring us back to, I think, being uh, you know, relevant again. I mean, two outright Big Ten titles in maybe four or five years of stuff he's had. I think mean, he deserves immense um, credit for that. I'm also very excited about where we are with, with Archie Miller, and I think he's going to be a very, very successful coach and here for a very, very long time. Um, look at recruiting, he said he was going to be inside out. Uh, with all the kids that we're getting from Indiana, the kids that you know I can't comment uh, on that, 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 that he's on um, now. Um, from Indiana, back to back Mr. Basketballs for the first time in 21 years. Recruiting's lifeblood, and he's doing it. Uh, developing players, look, look, look at Rob Fennessey. Uh, uh, Trace Jackson Davis, um, uh, Armand Franklin, he's getting these kids and he's, he's developing them um, as well. And then I think increasingly we see this team um, taking on the personality of his coach, of, of his coach with mental toughness and the ability to make plays at winning time. And, and I know some of our fans you know, wish it would have been a little better, easier against UConn and maybe a little. Um, Easier against Nebraska, although I think the Purdue loss took a little bit of the edge off of those uh, comments. But, but but I always saw those games as a glass half full, you know, because yeah, maybe we could have done better. And I ain't seen the back cuts or guys do layups. But when push came to shove, our guys were tough. They were mentally tough. They made the plays you need to make to win. And that's Archie, and that's part of the reason I'm super optimistic about uh, the men's basketball program. And, and I think the sky's the limit there. You talk about when you jump over and start driving your car with the headlights on, what advice would you have for somebody, whoever it is, that steps into your role of what you wish you knew when you stepped into the game and the job that they might not expect to be looking for? Um, you know, Ken, I just think I need to be real careful about gratuitous advice for whoever succeeds me. You know, I mean, it's going to be their agenda, it's going to be their vision. I'm really proud of what we've accomplished over what the last uh, 12 years, and, and I hope a lot of the commitment to being a values-based organization, um, a student-centered uh, organization, um, committing to their personal development as much as we commit to their academic uh, development and their athletic development. I hope those stay. Um, but every person faces new challenges and different challenges, and, and uh, I think it would be presumptuous for me to Know, set an agenda or, uh, or give advice to whoever comes next. What do you wish you did? Other than like anything, everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's 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 hard to tell. Um, I uh, it, it really those early those early uh, times were sort of blur at this point. And obviously, there's so much of a spotlight on, on the decisions you make with men's basketball and football and such, but. Can you talk a little bit about the, the, the pride you feel as, you, as you're leaving now with kind of like where, like Miss, uh, women's basketball and soccer and baseball and such stand as well under your watch? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the question because I understand the, the weight that football and men's basketball have and how justifiably important they are and, and sort of their preeminence st stature, certainly on the fans' uh, mind. But we are 24 sports, one team, and I'm thrilled about the coaches uh, we have when I look across the board and you know Sean Stan in softball, Jeff Mercer in baseball, um, uh, Steve Ayer is really getting it going in volleyball, Angel Escobedo in, in, in wrestling. Um, you know, I inherited uh, Brian Helmer and Ray Lewis with great jobs those guys are doing um, with those uh, terrific programs. Todd Gable, the first person I hired, Erwin Von Benekam, who's coming up on the women's soccer side. I, I look back, we have 19 coaches that coach our. 24 sports, and I hired 15 of them. Um, and um, to a person, uh, I think they have the, the, the potential to be really excellent in their programs, and I'm really excited about that. Probably love somebody out there. Terry. You love Terry. Terry Boyd. Yeah. yeah, well, I talked to, That was one of the hardest conversations today because um, I think Terry and I just share a special bond about the, the way she was hired in challenging circumstances. And, and my and then to see 
seen them beating, you know, 2017 national champion, South Carolina, highest ranking uh, ever, uh, uh, really uh, realizing the potential of women's basketball in Indiana. Um, I feel a special uh, pride in her and, and, and connectivity. Um, really miss the way she came. I know you said you didn't want to uh, just give, like you said, gratuitous advice to whoever your successor may be, but I mean, do you view there as being an obvious challenge for that next person, or do you feel like the foundation's been set that there's not necessarily one thing or a few things that stand out, and it's just a question to keep it going? Do you see something that's sort of obvious that the next like, successor will have to happen? You know, I think it's a fair question. Um, you know, I, I think uh, finances are, are a challenge everywhere, particularly here. Um, we compete in the Big Ten and we get a full share of the media money, and that's awesome. That helps us uh, compete. But because we have a small football stadium that we don't fill, we're at a huge economic disadvantage with those that we compete against. I think the last year for which records were kept, uh, um, Indiana had the least amount of revenue in the Big Ten, about six and a half million dollars, and Michigan had fifty-eight million dollars. Um, you know, half the league had twenty million dollars. That matters. That matters when you're hiring coaches and investing in, in, uh, in, in things. And, and so that's part of the reason we've been so aggressive on fundraising to try to level that playing field a little bit by, by getting extra dollars. But that'll continue to be a challenge. Um, and that's part of the reason I'm so appreciative to the president and the board of trustees for their support and helping us uh, make the investments that we make in football. One thing I emphasized to Tom when I told him that I was moving on was that um, the commitments we've made to football are institutional commitments. They're not uh, for a class commitments. They're not even just athletic department commitments. They're commitments that have gone up to the president and the board of trustees in terms of the size of his compensation, the ever green nature of his uh, term, and all the things that I think indicate real support for him. Um, so, so I think finances are a challenge, but I'm appreciative that the university is uh, supporting us there. The other thing is just the whole landscape of our collegiate athletics is dramatic. Changing. It's dramatically changed uh, since I've been here, and there are even more dramatic changes on the horizon with you know, name, image, and likeness, uh, pay for play. You know, what's that, what's that going to mean? I mean, I, th I think it could be dramatic uh, changes, and I think that will be a, a big uh, challenge for whoever comes next. So, Tom, uh, obviously, 10, 11 years doing this, I mean, did you? When you came and think that you were going to be doing this this long, and why do you think you hung in so long, so many years in this job? Yeah, I, I, I came with the intention of trying to stay for a long time. Um, I was the fifth athletic director in eight years when I was hired, and so I just let that sink in a little bit. You know, five athletic directors in eight years. I can't even imagine how long it takes you to get to certain things and sustain initiatives and get things done. And and, and I think that it created, um, you know, uh, frankly, a lot of dysfunction and, 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 and uh, morale challenges people thought that was normal, it's not normal. And I thought to myself, you know, I may not be the best AD ever, and I may not really know what I'm doing, but I can like be here. You know, Woody Allen said, what, 90% of life is showing up, I think there's a lot to that. And so I think the longevity uh, would be helpful if I wanted to stay for a while. I didn't have a pre-plan of whether this was the last thing I was ever going to do or not. I thought maybe it might be. Um, but as those things uh, developed for me, bicentennial year, capping off some of our um, uh, initiatives. You know, I mean, my oldest granddaughter's five, so you know, my daddy grandchildren, when I, when I started, my kids were growing, I felt like I was sort of through that. Now I feel like I'm coming back through, and I don't, I don't want to miss that stuff. And I want to have the flexibility that I had when my own kids uh, were little. So to answer your question, I didn't have a preconceived notion of how long, but I, I felt like I owed it to the university to make it a good long, uh, tenure, and I feel like 12 years fulfills that. You know, that. I guess as you do talk about challenges in terms of kind of on-field success, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the one area that it feels like you've kind of fought with more than others is men's basketball, just uh, again, without maybe wanting to push the no advice thing too hard, what do you think kind of the, your successor and maybe the department more generally needs to do to keep kind of pushing that program forward into the next decade? Well, you know, I'm confident we'll continue to make all the investments that, that need to be made. I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, undeniably a premier uh, program, a, a source of uh, great
great intention, and I think we've um, uh, respected that by the investments that we've made. I think your paper's written about you know, where we rank on investments in recruiting and travel and so forth. And it's way at the top, which I'm actually proud of that. Um, so I think we need to continue to make those investments, and I'm confident we will. And I think we also have to just be a steady hand on the helm, you know. Um, I think people in my job uh, need to be the, uh, the steady hand, the adult supervision, um, don't swing with the highs and the lows. And I, I haven't, I haven't uh, walked away from tough decisions that have been made. I don't think I'm Pollyanna about that. But, but, but I think giving things time um, in, in all our programs, doing it the right way, um, not getting impatient. Um, like Kipling said, treating uh, success and failure as the imposters that they are um, day to day, sort of keeping your eye on the horizon, I think is an important quality really for all of our sports. Uh, Fred, there's that sign on the door of your office that says you can be interrupted every time for a student athlete to come in. So, in your decade plus of kind of dealing with student athletes here at IU, what did you learn that they wanted from their athletic programs and how did you? Try and foster that relationship between the athletic department as you know one giant entity and making that a personal relationship with those athletes as well. Right, right. Well, thank you for knowing that about the sign on my door. Um, by far, my favorite part of this job is interacting with students, and particularly the students that participate in collegiate athletics. But I also enjoy and accept every invitation I'm given to uh, uh, speak on, on campus and classes. And, and my assistants here somewhere, I had to pray to probably two dozen. Kids come in and do their, their uh, sports media interviews of me. So I figure if they've got enough nerve to ask me, I'll always say yes. And so I enjoy seeing the kids on uh, uh, campus as well. In terms of what they want, I think they want to be heard. You know, I mean, uh, they've got perspectives. We've made SAC, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, really a third leg of, of, of how we uh, run the department, engage them, give them real estate, give them offices. Given them stature, um, I get to know those kids, you know, uh, generally um, very well. It's a cross section of people. We started the um, Athletic Directors Council on uh, Diversity and Inclusivity three or four years ago. As, as, as those tensions in our country were, I think, kind of pulling people apart, we wanted to have a forum where we kind of bring people um, together. So I think, in terms of what they want, they, they would like to be heard and, and like to be respected. Um, and, and for me, that's awesome because that's my favorite part, you know, interacting with them. And I will say, uh, never put a sign like that on your door if you don't expect them to drop in and, and expect to be seen, which I had my eyes wide open about that. Um, and, they, and they drop in and, and, and we talk. You mentioned you had a private meeting with Archie to kind of break the news to him. I guess what was his reaction to that? And you mentioned how you like he's done recruiting, but other things that he's doing with the program that you're really kind of happy with. Yeah, as you might imagine, Archie was very even, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I told him. And then very immediately, you know, congratulations, you know, happy for me. Uh, we've gotten to know each other uh, well. Um, and it, I, I'd like to say, enjoy each other. I certainly enjoy him. So, so it, it, was, it was immediately. Congratulations and good for you. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, very even Tom, uh, similarly, was, uh, was very positive about it. Um, and, uh, and I thought that was very good of him given where we were in the conversations about, uh, about the contract. And if he wouldn't have brought it up, I wouldn't have, I couldn't imagine going through that process and then, you know, sort of telling him that afterwards. Um, but it did sort of accelerate things. The president was awesome too. I told him late at night before he was going to have a two-day trustee meeting, which that was not a good time. Um, but he was very positive about it, and, uh, um, and, and, and I confess that I was a little nervous about telling him, um, but he was great. Um, here, here at the end of the line, now when you look back at the at the beginning of the line, back in 2008-2009, and, and uh, not having a lot of athletic directing experience, do you think about kind of the doubts that you might have had that, that, that you kind of eviscerated, or how did you kind of see yourself grow into the position, maybe as a person as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, as I was considering whether or not to take the job, I had considerable doubts because I didn't know anything about it. I didn't have my background. Um, 
But, but, but once I concluded that, that I thought I could do it, that I, that I thought I could take my experiences um, from, from public service and really apply them to, um, to be an athletic director, I felt like I could do it. And I, and I was kind of corny, but one of my favorite uh, moments in history is the Cuban Missile Crisis and all the lessons that came out of that. And there's this great part in this movie where Kevin Costner is the, the chief of staff to JFK. And uh, they, uh, you know, this is happening. They know what's going on and they're new and everything. And so they bring in this, um, um, Avril Harriman, this like old time uh, diplomat and ask him what to do. And it turns out that he just is a kind of clueless gas bag and they each other like, my God. And then Costner goes to JFK, whoever he was, I forget. And he says, you don't get it, do you, Jack? You know, there's no wise old man. You know, it's just us. And, and, and I always remember that because um, you, you, can't, you can't look at somebody else to tell you what to do. You know, you've got to have confidence in your own abilities and, and, and you can make the best decision you think you can um, and do what you think is right because, like Eleanor Roosevelt said, you'll be criticized no matter what you do. So you might as well do the thing you think is right. You know, don't try to placate the mob. Don't try to avoid criticism. Do what you think is right, and if it turns out not to be right, at least at least you're trying to do the right thing. For the probably the riskiest move you had to make during your time here was was hiring Tom with with no uh, college experience and such. Uh, how good does it make you feel that uh, three years later that it looks like you, you you made the right choice there? Well, I'm glad for I'm glad for the kids. I'm glad for you know Indiana football. Validation is sort of like criticism. It's a it's a phantom thing to have somebody uh, else you know tell you to do a good job. It's, it's perhaps someone else tell you to do a bad job, and you got to kind of judge it yourself. And you know, if the ball had bounced the wrong way a few times, and we ended up at five and seven this year, I think I'd still think Tom's the right guy because because he's the same guy in terms of recruiting and building and all that. And I thank God, you know, day four. That's awesome. It makes the day a lot better. You know. Um, but, but, if, but, but I'm not sure the fundamentals would have been different if, you know, if, if a few things uh, changed. Um, but I believe in it from the beginning, and I believe I'm really not surprised that, that we are where we are. You said that uh, you're retiring from this job and not retiring generally. Do you have any ideas of things you want to do or kind of waiting to figure that out? Yeah, I think you have to take it one step at a time. So, so I, I, I'm, I'm retiring from uh, Indiana University retiring from being an athletic director. I have no interest in that anywhere else, but I'm not retiring. Um, you know, professionally, I'll return to Indianapolis and, uh, and, and, and see what makes sense. My guess is it'll be something similar to what I was doing before. I, I think I'm fortunate that you know, I had this life before. I have trained, you know, I'm a lawyer, and had, had practice, and I can go back to that. And I think that makes it easier for me to disengage and, and sort of go back and, and maybe you know, some of my other colleagues um, who, who may not have that luxury. All right, anything else? Thanks for coming. Be safe uh, driving out there, you guys. I appreciate it. Go IU. Mm -hmm.